second half of this trip ends up on Little Muddy Creek. It gets a little spicy and a lot dirty. So make sure the kiddos are in bed. Don't worry, I won't blame you if you skip to the money shots at the end. Well, and a good morning to everybody. And just as a little proof that I wasn't going insane about coyotes, I could hear uh, some rustling around last night. Didn't really feel like getting up, but they left me a present. Here's the tent and the Jeep. And right over here is a nice little uh, elk, I'm assuming, hoof. Just to give that perspective, she uh, is pretty big. That was uh, that was not there last night. But hey, I mean, if those guys are going to deliver me breakfast, who am I to say no? From Camp Coyote, X marks the spot, it's about three miles till Big Meadows T-Bones Blue Ridge Trail. Once there, I'll take a right, which is another three miles back to Highway 40. All right, as promised, back on the main trail. Let's go find out what that number is. Although it could be kind of hard to find, because when you're coming from that direction, Cottonwood Pass, I believe, you're gonna see this turn off right over here. And this sign, has seen better days. I don't know how many numbers and letters I got right, but that would be 2531D. So you head down there, maybe about a quarter mile, the road does split. You go right, you're gonna hit where I camped last night. You go left is where it dead ends. Over the valley, it's a little off camber. Worth seeing, it's not that far. But uh, hopefully that helps you out. So I dropped the ball. If I had gone, uh, not even 100 yards farther down the trail. There's this spot. Coming from over there. It's an old camp's fireplace. I forgot what a, uh, yeah. Um, firing, that's, that's the ticket. And then there's this view. Awesome freaking view. So, just go past that, uh, turn off by about 80, 100 yards. Left hand side, super obvious. Camp over here. So it looks like we are going to start switch back and down. But you can see that down there. You can kind of see the road just snaking its way down in the valley. Should get prettier. You can see in the distance where all the trees are turning. So hoping we hit that. I know there's other gorgeous places in this state. Probably maybe better than this, but Hard to freaking complain. And should watch where I'm going. So there's a little bit of a uh, run going down the middle of this road. So tire placement might be key depending on what you're driving. As a wise man once said, gotta get up to get down, gotta get up to get down. Well, this is the down part. If you're running heavy, Putting your rig in four low and riding your gears a little should give your brakes some much needed assistance. Once you get your pace sorted, take the time to look up, well, without swan diving over the edge for a perfect score, as this is some of the best views of the entire trip. Or better yet, if your travel buddy has been bugging you for some seat time, act like you're doing them a favor by letting them drive while you reap the benefits. One more little rocket section, where if you wanted to go a little to the right, it seems like you could uh, have some fun.
what you can't see from those aerial shots are some decent ruts and mud. Come through during some rain, you'll get a free paint job and a Christmas morning smile. Can't resist checking out this spur. I have a feeling it's hiding some pretty good views. All right, I don't know how many of you really care about campsites, but there's another one coming towards the end of the trail. It's not bad behind me, but when you swivel around, there is your fire pit. I uh, got the name right this time. And then you got all of that. And then you got a little of that and that over there. Not bad. You're kind of close to the main trail. You can see it down there. But, could be worth it. I'm not a bovine scientist, but I think when they got horns, means they're uh, they're a bull. Look at that guy. Can you see him in here? I think so. Hey, buddy. Hey. Right. How's it going? Moo? Oh, uh, no, I see udders. Uh, that cow can't decide uh, what it really is. But you know what? I support your choices. And there you have it. The end of uh, Big Meadows Trail. See the end of it right here. So if you're curious, if you're coming from the other direction, come around this corner. And you go up there. And then this, I believe is Blue Ridge, Blue something. I know it has a couple different names that I've seen online. Fairly easy, I think it's about 16 miles. If I go that away, it's short drive to uh, Sulphur Hot Springs, which I think I'm gonna go over there. Go wet a line while I wait for my buddy to go hit up Little Muddy Creek, which should be a very different day, but my opinion of the trail we just did, worth it. The second half got more interesting, a lot more aspens, tons of camping spots. I saw one person last night, the Toyota, that uh, actually passed me while I was filming and that was it. Um, every spot for camping I came across was open. Um, if you're looking just for a mild trail, I got a 10, I think with the ruts, maybe a three or a four. If it rains, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a lot of fun. But especially in fall, um, tons of animals, all the trees. Uh, I recommend it for sure. And there's a ton of other stuff to do around here as well. So it would seem a deer got into, I don't know, giant box of pop rocks and just poof, she exploded. Behind me was a pile of fur. And now there's this, which has been well munched on. That's not an ominous start to the day. Well, if you don't see me again, now you know what happened. Snacks! Yeah, get me some. There they are. Oh, there's Church, and there's a no-name guy. After meeting up with the crew, we decided to take Blue Ridge all the way to the end so we could tackle Muddy Creek from top to bottom. This is basically a graded dirt road, but once again, sure is purdy. I'll put up a quick map for you all so you can get an idea of what I'm yammering about. Blue Ridge is in, yep, blue. Muddy Creek is in red. You can run it in either direction and there are multiple ways to access it. Oh, did you hear me up there, but now we made it, I guess halfway through, started Muddy Creek and it was pretty much like a gravel road. Now it's getting a little bit more rutted and heading down. Trees are coming in. This is pretty. You're getting like little dashes of mud here and there. But uh, nothing too horrible yet. Or fun rather, but this is getting to be the end of September, so let's see what's left. This was from our June trip. Just to show how wet this trail normally is, it was the first and easiest obstacle of the day. Today, it was a dust bowl. It's easy to see how this trail could be a serious challenge earlier in the season, but at this point in the year, it seems to be just fun without the serious threat of any real damage. 
Oh, but don't you worry. I find a way to eat those words later on. The description of this trail often warns that between the off-camber sections and the slick mud that the possibility of sideswiping a tree is pretty high. I can vouch for that. I've seen it. But so far, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Well, the mud might not be everywhere. I'll have to eat my words in 10 minutes, but it's a lot prettier than I expected. All right, so we drop down to where the creek actually is. We're getting some good runs. A little off camber. And some empty mud pits and some are starting to fill up with a little, uh, little rock in the water. For a while there, it was just a little dusty creek. I don't know if you can see it on the GoPro. There's a weight limit sign over here. That's a new noise. I don't know who's driving a 40 ton double, triple axle vehicle over here. But you know what? Um, good for them. Good for them. It's a moose. All right. A little bit of mud. That being said, Drive. Finally, it's good to start getting the chance to splash through the sloppy stuff. I was really getting worried that I wouldn't even need a car wash afterwards. That sound is a precursor to a horrible situation. And the general Jeep fix of turning up the stereo loud enough to drown out the new noise didn't work this time. I know, I know, I keep going on about it, but it's not often, at least not over here, where you get mud pits dressed up with curtains of fall colors. This is how you tackle a mud bog when you're borrowing your 16 year old daughter's Jeep for the day. And this is how you tackle a mud bog when you rebuild a Jeep from salvage, bringing it back from the dead, hence the name church. That is not a good noise, people. Don't know what it is. As I'm sure y'all already know, I drive a manual. So you probably already know why my Jeep sounds like it's screaming, kill me. At this point, I'm just stuck in it and decided to keep pushing forward for as long as this old ship holds together which means enjoying this section on the trail. Even this time of year, it's an absolute freaking blast. By the end of this day, one of us shall not make it home. Spoiler alert, it's me. But it's not what you probably think it is. Something else takes me down at the knees. Comment below if you have a guess of what it might be. Here comes a pretty stock sport folding tires. Still getting the job done. And here comes I assume for him, this is boring. Oh, slippy flighty. All right, so this area in the spring, early summer, would probably be snotty, messy, awesome black. Right now, it's a uh, two-wheel drive coach. And sorry for that uh, high pitch squeal. Um, sounds like something's going on with the pulley. I think I did something with the hub. So I guess it's a good thing it's not super muddy because it's falling apart right off the bat. So without the mud, these are now just big old deep ruts. 
and I finally put it in the 4WD just in case, man. Yeah. Uh oh, I think I just got a little. Oh, here we go. Holy hell. This full of mud would have been a different story. What can I say? I'm impressed. This JKU Sport is basically bone stock, besides a front grille full of teenage angst and tires pushing well past retirement had no real issues on this trail. Goes to show you don't need a parts catalog model rig to have some fun. Even in these drier conditions, don't let yourself get complacent. The ruts often lead you into walls, and panel damage would be an easy thing to pick up. Speaking of body damage, remember earlier when I mentioned sideswiping a tree? Well, this is where this buddy hip checked my other buddy's Grand Cherokee into this commemorative tree. With an easy and dry climb out of Little Muddy Creek, you now have an idea of what you're getting into. And by picking your time of year, you can decide how challenging you would like to make it. Into the season, enjoy some fun with lots of beautiful colors. Or come earlier in the season and get so dirty, you won't even be allowed into confession. Well, can't own a Jeep without having problems. Just got this back from the service shop at a dealership a couple days ago, checking out some wiring. Had that same sensor go off, Jeep died, started smoking, and I am 10 miles away from the nearest town out in the sticks. But hey, still have 4G, thank you Verizon. So at least it's uh, not Sunday, it's Saturday, so got a night to think about it. And remember, what's your goal 